Okay, thank you. Hello all, I'm Marcela and I'll be presenting Flavio's PhD research entitled Guidelines for the Development of Urban Eco Villages. So, um, I'm sorry. So considering the negative consequences of the intense urbanization process, many groups decided to deal with the problem by denying the city and isola isolating themselves from it, forming some intentional communities seeking for self-sustainability. Today, however, many of these communities go through a certain deflation of their population due to migration of mostly young people to areas more, more culturally rich and diversified, mainly to those areas intensely urbanized that the previous generation tried to flee from. So which proves that isolation and self-sufficiency are not necessarily attributes of sustainable environments. As an, as an example here in Brazil of something that actually worked, we have the Mato Dentro community, which different from those mentioned failed communities, established itself close to three urban centers, allowing for mobilization of people and cultural exchange. So this community presents a balanced population of growth, it maintains environmental awareness, economic efficiency, and overall a healthy social relationship with its members. And such a phenomenon represents a reference for the, the present research, for Flavio's research. Um, more recently, however, some projects and investments stand out which are specifically directed to dense urban areas. However, they aim to produce buildings and environments that um, usually utilize materials that come from socially and environmentally degraded systems and that are usually evaluated by indexes that mainly take into account its energy efficiency, especially here in Brazil. So an example is um, Mazdar City in the United Arab Emirates. Um, it's a project that justifies itself as being entirely sustainable but it presents the deficiencies of the early mentioned project and also of the isolated communities. It denies the urban environment and it's not accessible to everyone. So uh, considering what was said, uh, Flavio's main goal in his research is to establish guidelines for the development of urban eco-villages through the improvement of knowledge uh, regarding urban sustainability and bibli bibliographical review and also through examples of urban fragilities and solutions that are legally feasible. Also through experimental evaluation of the, his adopted methodology by building a sustainable urban environment for 50 families here in the city of Campinas in Brazil. Also from the mentioned experiment, he aims to elaborate and group systemically guidelines for developing urban eco-villages. So his hypothesis is that it is expected that through practical and theoretical studies regarding sustainability in urban environments, through planning by taking into consideration the user's needs and the technical abilities of the producer of those built environments, and finally through pra practical experiment, it is possible to define guidelines for establishing urban eco-villages as a reference for occupation of empty urban spaces, for requalification of already dense areas, or even for rural communities. So um, Flavio follows the constructivist grounded theory, and as a basic methodology being followed, he is performing theoretical research regarding the Brazilian law that is related to the experimental part of the study, and he's also searching for Brazilian international references of experiences about developing sustainable urban environments, um, and another methodological step is choosing the location for the experimental part of the study composing and organizing a group to form the eco-village through the constitution of three management tools that will cooperate for the sustainable balance. The Flor do Anumas Institute that, take, that takes care of environmentally related subjects, especially regarding environmental education. The Eco-Village Members Association that represents the social relationships of the eco-villages group. And the Cajueiro Financial Administrator responsible for all the financial transactions. Some basic uh, technical processes that are also being carried out are determined by the law that refers to land registration and encompasses the emission of municipal guidelines and project approval, of course, by the city, the city hall. Also, um, some pilot house projects are being elaborated as examples coherent with the eco-village proposal. And finally, the guidelines for urban eco-villages are being established through the practical and theoretical development of his research. So as some preliminary results that Flavio 
God, he already chose a location for the urban eco village. It's called Santa Margarida, the eco village, which means uh, Saint Daisy in English. And as you can see here in the main picture, that that's the project, and it's in the middle of the city. It's not an isolated area, as you can see by that satellite map. And some activities are already been being developed in the in the eco village. Uh, the houses are not yet built, of course, but. The members already meet monthly and develop different activities there. So there's an, a social integration already. Um, the pilot residences have already been suggest suggested for the homeowners to have examples of what would be a coherent project for the Eco Village proposal. And also, he started defining the guidelines that uh, define the requirements to characterize a project as an urban eco village. And it's separated mainly in nine parts. First, he defines what an urban eco-village is. It's a sustainable and ecological project, characterizes the human occupation, seeking the creation of models of sustainable life, respecting the characteristics of the region where it's located, and covering four dimensions, social, ecological, co cultural, and spiritual, all combined to stimulate uh, the community and in individual development. He also defines that the urban project must respect the municipal guidelines in accordance with the municipal guiding plan. Every city here in Brazil has a municipal guiding plan, and it needs to be followed to, to guarantee project approval. He also defines that the developer of the urban eco-village must implement green urban infrastructure systems. He specifies them more thoroughly in his PhD research. Um, he also predicts that some tax-related incentives will be given to those who choose to live or to build an urban eco-village. Um, he defines what the residences must have, all of the houses. Uh, for example, pre-treatment of sewage, rainwater harvesting. Uh, the separation between houses must be done with see-through material. They don't want the segregation between the houses. Um, composting system, solar water he heating system, and many others. The homeowners association also must be created after the project registration because it, it will guide all the social relations between homeowners and also between the, the developer of the project. And the homeowners must be aware of their responsibility regarding the community, following the obligations that are listed in the guidelines, but also some other recommendations that will enhance the eco village's sustainable character. And finally, um, he allows for pre-existent projects or even already built areas to adequate themselves to the guidelines so that they can also be considered as an urban eco-village and receive all the benefits that arise from it. So this was mainly what we had to show you. In behalf of Flavio, I thank you for your attention. And we're both here available to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.